This is billionaire investor Kyle Bass. For the past two years, he's been heavily investing in lands in Florida, Tennessee, and Texas. Since then, the population in all three states increased by tens and hundreds of thousands of people. While the price of land in Texas alone appreciated 123% over the decade. How did he know where to invest? And why could this success be a sign of a big global crisis around the corner? First things first, why the Kyle Bass chose Florida, Tennessee, and Texas out of 50 states? There are four main reasons for that. Population growth, home prices, infrastructure, cost of living, and taxes. Every investor understands that the economy grows only in places where more people move to because that means people will spend money creating a higher demand, which allows business to grow and expand. That's why when choosing where to invest, every advisor focuses on locations with growing population. Today, over 341 million people live in the U.S., and many migrate not only overseas, but also within the country. For example, between 2022 and last year, the three states Kyle Bass invested in, meaning Florida, Tennessee, and Texas, had one of the largest population increases in the whole country. And on top of that, Texas and Florida were a popular choice among younger people. Why is that important? Generally speaking, younger people are expected to work more years. Therefore, they pay more taxes, and they're also more likely to have kids. That's why youth is a so-called driver of the economy. But population growth is a rare thing these days, because many U.S. states are losing people. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, these eight states are leading in negative growth rates. New York, Louisiana, Hawaii, Illinois, West Virginia, California, Oregon, and Pennsylvania. Why does that happen? There are three main factors that determine if the population will grow or shrink. Aging, meaning how old the population is, birth rate, referring to the newborns, and migration. It includes people moving inside the country as well as those coming to and departing from the U.S. As for aging, among those eight states with decreasing population, Three of them have some of the highest average ages in the whole country. Those are West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Hawaii. Interestingly, Florida is also among the leaders in aging, but this compensates with the positive migration, meaning that more and more people are moving there. Another factor is the birth rate. While Texas is in the top 10 states with the highest birth rate, New York, California, Oregon, Hawaii, and Pennsylvania have a much lower birth rate than the national average. And it's another factor why those states have a shrinking population. But of course, migration within the country is the major factor for the changes in population, at least in the short term. But why do people decide to move to other states? Well, housing prices, it's one of the main reasons. And guess what? These three states Texas, Florida, and Tennessee have more affordable housing than many other states. For example, in 2023, the U.S. median home price was around $395,000. And if we look at the states Kyle Bass chose for investing, they have home prices close to the national median, which is $389,000 in Texas, $410,000 in Florida, and $402,000 in Tennessee. This is sometimes twice as low as median home prices in the most expensive states like California, Washington, and Colorado. But you know what's interesting? Even though houses are relatively affordable in Texas, Florida, and Tennessee, they are not the cheapest places to buy a home. For example, Kansas, Michigan, and Louisiana all have prices below the national median. Why don't investors buy properties there then? It has to do with infrastructure, and both Michigan and Louisiana have some of the lowest infrastructure rates. This ranking takes into account everything from road quality to internet access. So, of course, people would choose places that are better located and have better living conditions. But nowadays, 
when many can work remotely, they also consider places with a lower cost of living. There is actually a whole index that measures it. It includes prices of food, housing, transportation, and medical care. The higher this index, the more expensive the state is for living. And frankly, this might be one of the most important factors that makes people move somewhere. For example, out of the eight states that have negative population growth, four are in the top 10 most costly states. Hawaii leads a state with the most expensive cost of living. Next comes New York, California, and Oregon. These states also have pricey rents. And on top of the cost of living, those same states have some of the highest income taxes. Meanwhile, Texas, Florida, and Tennessee have no personal income tax. Is that a coincidence that investors choose those states? Probably not. Well, with all this data, we can clearly see a general trend. Many people move out of the states with high housing prices, high cost of living, and high taxes, choosing more favorable states instead. So what investors do is analyze this data and choose places that are more attractive and have greater potential, just like Kyle Bass did. But why do people even care about him? Why do we even bother to look into this investment? In the end, Kyle Bass isn't the only billionaire in this country. It's all because Bass made a smart prediction during the 2008 U.S. housing crisis. What did he do? Simply put, he bet that the housing market will crash. In technical language, he did this by buying credit default swaps on risky subprime mortgages. As a result, this bet paid off. Bass saw that banks were giving mortgages to very risky borrowers with poor credit history, and he realized that sooner or later, this system will collapse because it was an oversaturated housing bubble. So basically, he played against the market, and he won. How much did Kyle Bass make? He got 212% off profits with his funds, which was around $500 million. After this, he became famous and more people started to track his investing moves. But Kyle Bass was not the only one who predicted the 2008 real estate crash and made money on it. Another American investor, Michael Burry, used the same strategy and made around $100 million on this. Because of this, he became one of the main characters of the Michael Lewis book, The Big Short, which describes the actual events of the 2007-2008 housing bubble. The book then inspired the movie of the same name. The whole housing market is propped up on these bad loans. They will fail. After this movie, the term a big short investor got really popular. The terms basically refers to those who played against the real estate market in 2008 or continue to follow this strategy today. Overall, this investing strategy could bring a lot of profit, but it is risky and unpredictable. No one really knows when a new crisis could happen, so this tactic can waste a lot of money and time. But why do we hear more about Kyle Bass today? Does that mean a new crisis is coming? Could Bass predict it once again? Well, Bass does believe a crisis is coming, but are there real signs of a housing market crash? Let's check. There are five basic signs of a real estate bubble growing speculation in the market, rising mortgage rates, an economic downturn, excessive demand, increasing rental vacancy rates. Speculations in the housing market are all about unfair property prices and developers monopoly. If the market has only one big player, no one can compete with them and the prices get out of control. This exact situation happened in China with one of the country's largest property developers. Evergrande. And what drove the great Chinese miracle on the economic side? It was unfettered uh, growth and even speculation in the real estate markets. Today, we see a massive downfall in China's residential real estate. And Bass is a firm believer that the crisis in the U.S. can start because of China. Also, he says that China is facing the U.S. financial crisis on steroids. What does that mean? Actually, nothing good for China. China's stock market is in freefall, and we wonder if the economy is going with it. 
The truth is that China's real estate debt problem might be worse than what we face in 2008. The combined debt of their two main real estate companies is skyrocketing. It has now reached a half trillion dollars. Between China Evergrande and Country Garden, two companies have $500 billion worth of debt. And what complicates the situation even more is that real estate is very important for the Chinese economy. And if housing fails, the economy will suffer inevitably. When you think about the Chinese, you, you mentioned the Chinese real estate is, is vital to their GDP. It's somewhere between 33 and 40 percent of their GDP. And many think that the real housing crisis in China is yet to come, which increases uncertainty in the global economic market. Why should we care about China's crisis? If China's economy slows down, it will definitely impact the rest of the world, including the U.S., in several ways. Everything from trade to exchange rates. But it isn't China alone that makes investors worry. What is it then? Well, first of all, rising mortgage rates. When borrowing costs increase, fewer people can afford to buy houses. And the 30-year mortgage rate has been growing for several years now. With some ups and downs, of course, but overall, it's been increasing. So, it's hard to say that what we see now in the U.S. is the economic downturn. Of course, inflation isn't how we want it to be, but the Fed continues to fight the price increase. Plus, the average unemployment rate is pretty low today, and the U.S. GDP is growing, slowly but steadily. So the U.S. economy might be stabilizing. The interesting thing is that even despite the growing mortgage rates and inflation worries, we still see a high demand for real estate. This means that more people want to buy houses rather than sell them. But the truth is that growing prices and higher mortgage rates sooner or later will lead to more homes for sale on the market. But for now, it's too early to say if the supply of homes is stabilizing. It will greatly depend on what the Fed does and when it lowers the rates. As for the rental vacancy rate, it is higher than it was in 2021, but it isn't a record high either. So if it doesn't grow much in the next quarters, we will say the situation is stable. With that said, let's go back to our question. Is the new real estate crisis on its way? It depends. And to be honest, even the most experienced investors don't know for sure. Then why do people keep migrating from one state to another? The answer is simple, in search of better living conditions. Currently, Texas, Florida, and Tennessee are attractive to many Americans. That's why they are also attractive to investors like Kyle Bass. So if you were looking into some new investment opportunities, a good trick to use is to check whether the population grows or diminishes. If more people move to a state, it has higher potential, which is a great sign for investing. Sure, sooner or later, the crisis will come, and it is normal for the economy. Plus, it's a relatively short period, often around 18 months. It's simply time for the economy to reset and start growing again. What do you think about Kyle Bass investing strategy? Is it a good strategy or just plain luck? Let me know down in the comments and share this video with friends and families. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.